single ventricle pariation and cardiac physiology at each stage made clear by Pediatric Cardiology Playbook. Let's review some terms for this lecture here. QP stands for pulmonary blood flow, QS systemic blood flow, PBR pulmonary vascular resistance, SPR systemic vascular resistance, HLHS hypoplastic left heart syndrome. The patient with single ventricle heart defects undergo three stages of the single ventricle operative operations. First stage, node operation at newborn period. Second, grain operation at a three to five month of age. Third, fontan operation at a two to four years of age. Arterial saturations and QPQS are very different at each stage of single ventricle operation. It is important to understand cardiac physiology behind it. What is estimated QPQS in the following patient? A patient with no cardiac shunting defect, QP pulmonary blood flow, QS systemic blood flow. One to one. QPQS should be one to one in anybody with no intracardiac or extra cardiac shunting. The total amount of blood ejected from the right, right side of the heart into the pulmonary circulation is equal to that ejected from the left side of the heart into the systemic circulation. Next question, which is lower in normal individual, PBR or SPR? PBR, pulmonary vascular resistance abruptly decreases at the birth and continue to decrease over subsequent several weeks. Normal range in children, PBR index is less than 2 Uz unit square meter. SBR index, 9 to 18 Uz unit square meter. PBR is not only lower, PBR is much lower than SBR. These are examples of single ventricle heart defects. Hypoplastic heart syndrome, aortic atresia, mitral atresia, or aortic stenosis, mitral stenosis. Double outright right ben ventricle with mitral atresia with hypo LV hypoplasia, HLHS variant, tricuspid atresia, pulmonary atresia with intact ventricular septum. Think of single ventricle heart defects if a valve is atresia. This is a diagram for HLHS. In this lecture, single ventricle physiology refers to cardiac physiology before and after stage 1 pariation in a patient with single ventricle heart defect. What is the definition of single ventricle physiology? The definition of single ventricle physiology is complete mixing of pulmonary venous and system venous blood at the atrial or ventricle level then ventricle distribute output to both the systemic and pulmonary beds, parallel systemic and pulmonary circulation. As a result of complete mixing, oxygen saturation in the aorta and the pulmonary artery is the same. Output from single ventricle is the sum of pulmonary blood flow and the systemic blood flow. Distribution of pulmonary blood flow and systemic blood flow is dependent on pulmonary vascular resistance and the systemic vascular resistance. In short, because SBR is higher than PBR, therefore QS is smaller than QP. What is the ideal arterial saturation in a patient with single ventricle physiology? Seventy-five to eighty-five this is a diagram to show you blood flow in a hypoplast before stage 1 pariation. Each circle represents blood flow from SBC IBC pulmonary veins. The number in the circle represents saturation. The color of the circle reflects upon degree of oxygenation. Blue stands for deoxygenated blood, and the red reflects upon highly oxygenated blood. System venous return from upper and lower body with deoxygenated SAS 60% blood and the pulmonary venous return from left atrium with oxygenated 100% drains into right atrium where complete mixing occurs at the atrial level, SAS becomes 80% and it ejects to main pulmonary artery then distribute to branch pulmonary arteries in the aorta via PDA. Stage 1 pariation is composed of 
It will permanently shunt modify BT or RB to PA conduit, disturb main permanent RT transection and aorta to permanently RT anastomosis, beams gain stun cell anastomosis, arch reconstruction, atrial septectomy, and PDA ligation. This diagram is to show you blood flow in hyperpass after stage 1 palliation with modified BT shunt. Systemic venous return from upper and lower body with deoxygenated SARS 60% blood and, and permanent venous return from left atrium with oxygenated blood SARS 100% drains into right atrium where complete mixing occurs at the atrial level, SARS become 80% and it ejects to neo aorta, then distribute to branch permanent arteries via modified BT shunt and descending aorta. What causes desaturation SATs lower than 75% in a patient with single ventricle physiology? Three etiologies to cause DSATs in a single ventricle patient decreased pulmonary blood flow, pulmonary venous desaturation, systemic venous desaturation, decreased oxygen concentration of mixed venous blood. This diagram is to show you decreased pulmonary blood flow with chant stenosis and occlusion. Decreased pulmonary blood flow leads to less amount of pulmonary venous return with oxygenated blood SARS 100% mixing with systemic venous return with deoxygenated SARS 60% blood then it results in lower mixed blood SARS 65% that goes to the right ventricle for systemic circulation and that becomes systemic arterial saturation. Pulmonary venous desaturation. Due to atectasis, pneumothorax, perifusion, pneumonia, any lesion causes BQ mismatch in lungs. Pulmonary venous desaturation leads to pulmonary venous return with deoxygenated blood SARS 80%, mixing with systemic venous return with deoxygenated SARS 60% blood. That then it results in lower mixed bil blood, SARS 70%, goes to right ventricle for systemic circulation, and this becomes systemic arterial saturation, 70%. System venous desaturation. Decreased oxygen concentration of mixed venous blood due to high oxygen extraction, low hemoglobin, low cardiac output, increased oxygen demand in peripheral tissues such as sepsis. System venous desaturation leads to system venous return with severely deoxygenated SAS 50% blood mixing with permanent venous return with oxygenated blood SAS 100% then it results in lower mixed blood SAS 60% goes to right ventricle for systemic circulation and this becomes systemic arterial saturation 60%. What is estimated QPQS in the following patient? A newborn baby with hypoplasia, pulse oximeter, 90% on rumia, warm and well perfused, normal blood pressure, and no significant pulmonary disease noted on chest x ray. About 2 to 1. So let's go over this estimation of QPQS in a patient with hypoplasia. Fick method makes it possible to calculate QPQS. QP over QS equal to numerator SATs in the elder subtracted by SATs in the mixed spina SAT. Denominator SATs in a pulmonary vein subtracted by SATs in a pulmonary arteries. Normal arterial venous also extraction is 20 to 25. So numerator in this equation is 25 in the setting of normal cardiac output. For example, patient with biventricular heart and no intercardiac chance, arterial SATs 100%, then mixed venous SATs should be 75 to 80% with normal cardiac output. Patient with single ventricle, Arterial SATs 80%, then mixed venous SATs should be 55 to 60% with normal cardiac output. Oxygen saturation is the same in aorta and pulmonary artery in a single ventricle physiology. So SATs in aorta, SATs in a pulmonary artery equal to pulse oximeter reading. Full oxygen saturation of the pulmonary vein blood in the setting of normal lung is ex expected. So SATs in a pulmonary vein 100%. Then QPQS in a newborn baby with hypoplasia who has a normal cardiac output and low lung disease can be estimated in the following simple equation at the bedside. QPQ, QP over QS equal to 25 divided by 100 subtracted by pulse ox reading. If pulse ox meter reading is 90%, QPQS equal to 25 divided by 10, 2.5. If pulse ox meter reading is 80%, 
QPQS 25 divided by 20 equal to 1.25. Of note, this calculation is based upon many assumptions that these estimates can lead to serious misinterpretation. More accurate measure can be done by cardiac cath or cardiac MRI. This is a theoretical table to explain QPQS and ventricular output according to arterial oxygen saturation in a patient with single ventricle physiology. With arterial SAS 65 and 80%, a patient is cyanotic, but single ventricle can manage the ventricular output. QPQS 0.7 to 1.2, ventricular output is 5 to 8 liter per minute per square meter. With arterial SATs 95%, QPQS is much higher than ventricular output that single ventricle has to eject becomes enormous. Greater than 3 to 1 QPQS, ventricular output more than 10 liter per minute per square meter. It could progress to severe heart failure and a cardiogenic shock. Therefore, cyanosis blue is better than shock gray. This diagram is to show you QPQS before stage 1 palliation. With arterial SATs 92% estimated QPQS, it's about 3 to 1. Due to proportion of upper and lower body, 0.6 coming back from upper body via SBC, 0.4 coming back from I lower body via IBC, and the pulmonary blood flow coming back from pulmonary veins to left atrium. 0.6 and 0.4 becomes 1 and 3 coming back to right atrium becomes 4, goes out to right ventricle, and right ventricle ejects to pulmonary arteries, that becomes QPO3, and systemic cardiac output goes out to aorta, via PDA, and QS1. The pathophysiology of higher QPQS in a single ventricle palliation is not only for quote-unquote over-circulation, it's also Mild distribution of cardiac output leads to suboptimal QS. Therefore, the principle of perioperative medical management for a single ventricle patient is to maximize systemic oxygen delivery. Distribution of QPQS is dependent on the relative resistance to flow into the two parallel circuits. In short, PBR is lower than SBR, therefore QP is higher than QS. Goal is to keep low SBR and high PBR. Keep FiO2 21%, not to decrease PBR further. You may add pharmacological vasodilator such as mirinone to decrease SBR. Keep adequate hemoglobin to optimize oxygen carrying capacity. Surgical intervention to decrease QP, such as pulmonary artery band, or smaller shunt, may be warranted. Let's move on to the second stage. Bidirectional grain operation, also known as bidirectional cable pulmonary osmosis. Transect superior vena cava from right atrium and connect onto pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery. This diagram is to show you blood flow and saturation after bidirectional grain operation. Systemic venous return from upper body with deoxygenated SAS 60% blood drains into SBC, then into both right and left pulmonary artery for pulmonary circulation. Systemic venous return from lower body with deoxygenated SAS 60% blood drains to IBC, then right atrium. It mixes with pulmonary venous return from left atrium with oxygenated blood SAS 100% at right atrium, then mixed blood SATs becomes 85% goes to right ventricle for systemic circulation. Because 100% oxygenated blood mixed with less deoxygenated blood only from lower body at the right atrium becomes slightly higher saturation than after single ventricle stage 1 palliation and then 85% becomes systemic arterial saturation. Which is maneuver which maneuver can cause hypoxemia in a patient after bidirectional ground operation? Intubation, extubation, or hypoventilation, hyperventilation? Intubation and hyperventilation. Promoting blood flow with grain circulation must pass through two separate and highly regulated vasculature beds. Promoting vasculature, cerebral vasculature. 
what increases pulmonary vasculature resistance, hypoxia, acidosis, hypercapnia, atelectasis or hyperinflation of the lung, what increases cerebral vascular resistance, hypocapnia, and alkalosis. Intubation with mechanical positive pressure ventilation increases intrathoracic pressure. Hyperventilation decreases carbon dioxide in blood, then it constricts cerebral vasculature and decreases cerebral blood flow. SPC blood flow decreases, then pulmonary blood flow decreases. Intubation and hyperventilation leads to hypoxemia in a patient after bidirectional grain operation. Pressure diagram after bidirectional grain operation. Normal quote unquote grain pressure pressure in SBCRP and LPA is about 10 to 12 mm mercury. Normal atrial pressure is about 4 to 8 mm mercury. Therefore, acceptable upper limits for transpulmonary pressure gradient is 6 mm mercury in a univentricular circulation. Mean transpulmonary gradient pressure equal to mean pulmonary artery pressure subtracted by mean left atrial pressure. Transpulmonary gradient pressure can be elevated due to pulmonary venous obstruction, elevated pulmonary vascular resistance, increased intrathoracic pressure due to positive pressure ventilation, perfusion hemothorax, pneumothorax. Low transpulmonary pressure gradient is critical to promote pulmonary blood flow in the grain and fontan circulation. What is expected to QPQS in a patient after bidirectional grain operation? 0.6 to 0.7 to 1. This diagram is to show you QPQS with grain physiology. The real hemodynamic advantage of the bidirectional grain compared with shunted or banded single ventricle physiology is the reduction of the volume load on the ventricle. Estimated QPQS for post bidirectional grain is 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. Due to proportional upper body and lower body, 0 0.6 coming back from upper body via SBC and becomes 0 0.3 each for each pulmonary arteries. And then 0 0.3 coming back from lungs via pulmonary veins becomes 0 0.6, drains into right atrium, where 0 0.4 coming back from lower body via IBC mixed together becomes one. This one goes out to right ventricle, which is systemic ventricle. So therefore QS is one. And the 0.6 goes out to upper body that becomes QP or 0.6. And the rest of the 0.4 goes out to descending aorta for lower body. Three etiology for excessive hypoxemia after bidirectional grain operation decreased pulmonary blood flow due to stenosis at the grain anthemosis or pulmonary arteries, high pulmonary vascular resistance or veno veno collaterals in a late presentation. Pulmonary venous desaturation, atelectasis, perfusion, pneumonia, pneumothorax, any lesion causes BQ mismatch in lungs. Systemic venous desaturation, decreased oxygen concentration of mixed venous blood due to low cardiac cap, low hemoglobin, increased oxygen demand in peripheral tissues such as sepsis. This diagram is fontan operation total cable pulmonary connect connection. Extra cardiac conduit is a diagram shown here. IBC is connected to a conduit then other end of the conduit is connected to the underside of the right pulmonary artery. Interatrial tunnel anastomosis of proximal SBC to RPA, then placement of buffer in, inside the light atrium, so blood from IBC is directed to RPA. What is expected arterial saturation and QPQS in a patient after fontan operation? 100% arterial saturation, QPQS 1 to 1. This diagram is to show blood flow and saturation after fontan operation. System venous return from upper and lower body with deoxygenated SAS 75% blood drains into pulmonary arteries for pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary venous return from pulmonary veins with oxygenated blood SATS 100% goes to right ventricle for systemic circulation. That will be systemic 
RTA situation in the phone term and this fenestration that we are going to talk about next slide. What is fenestration? Fenestration is a connection between Fontan circuit and right atrium and it increases preload to si single system ventricle, therefore increase cardiac output at the expenses of desaturation right to left shunting at the fenestration. System venous return from IBC deoxygenated SAS 75% blood trends into right atrium via fenestration. It mixes with Pulmonary venous return from left atrium with oxygenated blood SAS 100% at the right atrium. Then mixed blood becomes SAS 95% goes to right ventricle for systemic circulation. That becomes for systemic arterial saturation. The benefits and the cost of Fontan physiology. Benefits are two separate circulation for pulmonary and systemic circulation QBQS121. Better systemic arterial saturation, no mixing except fenestration and coronary sinus, reduced volume loading of the system ventricle, reduced risk of product skull embolism through right to left chance. The costs are high systemic venous pressure, slow systemic venous return flow. Common clinical problems immediately after frontal operations. Low cardiac output state with symptom hypotension, poor perfusion, tachycardia. Frequent fluid resuscitation is required to optimize adequate preload. High volume and prolonged pleural effusion. High systemic venous pressure leads to translation of fluid from system veins into the interstitial space. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to Pediatric Cardiology Playbook.